Okay, first thing, I'm going to draw a square that is three inches wide, one inch tall. This will be their label. We're going to, with it selected, go up on our effect to convert to shape rounded rectangle. You can see that uh, our little box here, we've got preview checked so we can see what's going on. We want to keep it on relative but we're going to put in 0 and 0 and I just hit tabs to get through those. That now makes this back to our 3 by 1 size rather than adding to the size. We're going to put in an eighth down here which we got. Hit OK. Now when we go in and out of key line you'll notice it's still a square because it has an effect of the rounded rectangle. Next we're going to draw another square and this one I'm going to make half inch by half inch. And this is what we're going to use to punch out the lower corner and start to make the curl. So if you want it to be a lot more of a curl, you can make a bigger box. A smaller curl, you can use a smaller box. I'm going to shift select so I have both objects highlighted. I'm going to hold the option key. I'm going to click on the object I want to stay in place. So it's going to move my little red box up over to the corner here. And I have some quickies for that. I'm basically doing a line right and a line bottom. And because I option clicked this black box, it told the little red box to go to that shape rather than moving the big one. Now let's take this red box, move it out and down. So I moved it one arrow key to the right, one arrow key down, just so that I have a little bit of a lip. So it's going over it. And we'll actually use the upper triangle too later on. So I'm going to hover right over the point, click that one, go up to the top right one, go over that anchor point. Now we've got, here's one half and there's one half. If we go into key line, you can see there's no line. So we've got like little, little bits of triangle. I'm going to pull that one out. See, bit of a triangle. Command Z so I get back there. Now if we, if we come up here and click on that, it has now closed up that shape. See? Closed. Same thing down there. We're going to unite it and close it. Then we're going to take this lower red one. I'm going to hide this top one. Go down to hide. Selection. So it's still there. It's just hidden. Gets it out of our way. We're going to take this red corner piece, the lower one, a rounded rectangle. Up here we're going to hold the option key down this time, option key down and we're going to do this minus front. What that does is it creates basically an effect because we can come up here at any time with it selected and do release the compound shape and we got a little rectangle back. But we're going to hold the option key and minus the front and now when we go to do a drop shadow in the coming steps it'll go right along with this shape but we can always edit this curl to another location or change its size. It keeps it more editable this way. So let's go ahead and have this selected. And we're going to go up under Effect. We're going to go to Stylize. Drop Shadow. In this Drop Shadow dialog box, we'll move it over to this side so we can see it going on over here. I'm going to click Preview. See, it's following right along with it. It's totally ignoring that little, what used to be, red rectangle, or triangle. Now, uh, I'm keeping it on multiply. I'm going to put it 75%, which it came up to default. Multiply was also default. I'm changing the X and Y offset to 04, which they are already changed here, and the blur to 04, and then the color. We're going to change this one to 100, 100, 100 just because I want a nice dark one. You could leave it at just black. Now we're going to click OK. Now we've got a drop shadow. Nicely going around everything. Now we're going to have this selected and come to our colors and make it the white label that it should be. And so you've got just a hint of the shadow at the top and a nice dark one around the corner. Now we're going to go up under object to show all because we want to get this little red triangle back. That was the upper part of our box. Now this is what we're going to use to make our curl with the little label curling up in the corner. So we will need to get our pin tool and we're going to add a point in here, a point over on that side and then we're going to pull these all down. So, Okay, we're going to zoom up on this. That's a little bit big. Let's get it so it fits in there. There we go. Now our 
red triangle here doesn't quite fit. So we're going to add a point, and one up there, and one right there. Go back to the hollow point, and we're going to kind of just go right into that little corner right there. Same thing over here. I'm going to pull it out of the way so I can see my corner, and go right to there. Pull that one up and over. We kind of want to achieve like a little bit of a curling effect here. Straighten that up. Pull this down. You don't want it quite so big. Pull this in. Get a little more curly look. Pull this in. Tight up. And you'll periodically have to just kind of look at the whole thing label all and say is this starting to look like a curl or do I need to rotate a little more of the handles or what so let's do that we'll zoom out see if it looks like it's curling up that's like way too big okay let's see if we can't make this look a little more real Now I'm keeping these handles parallel with this edge. Adjusting it, here we go, that kind of looks right. Now we need to make this little red peel, which actually kind of looks cool, look more like a kind of a label gradient curling up. So I'm going to get the gradient out here, and that's just sitting there so I can click on it, and I'm just going to click on there, enter in our gradient. Let's zoom up a little bit so we can see what's going on with this. And now since I drew a square and cut it in half, this is a 45 degree angle. So I'm going to put in 45. And then we've got our black right against there and up there. And we could leave it like that, which doesn't look too bad, but I'm going to add in an extra gradient. So we're going to pull this back. I'm going to click on that, hold the Option key, and drag an extra one over there. And then this one we're going to make... Then we've got a little bit of darkness. And yeah, let's try 50. I'm gonna change the white point. Yeah, we're gonna leave it. So now as we zoom out, close that up, zoom out. Now it looks more like a curled up piece of paper. Birds or a logo or whatever you want. And because we had multiply for that gradient, then it actually does multiply over any of the backgrounds. And one nice thing about this, with this label selected, I can go into my free transform, and I can change the size of it, and the radius corner stays. That's how you make a peeled label look. Thanks for watching. Bye.